I was just thinking to myself, I need a haircut because when the when the the top of the headset here gets hidden by my hair, you know, I was, it's it's like okay, I need a haircut. Yeah, absolutely, I need a haircut. But then I noticed that my my hairline actually lines up with the earphones on the headset. I'm like, okay, then I'm totally pulling a Princess Vesper, or maybe a Reverse Vesper, where like your hair is too long and it's like. Yeah, something like that. <clears throat> so anyways, uh, it's been two months since my last video, which, in the grand scheme of things, that's not horrible, because, I mean, I've done longer breaks, but yeah, a lot has happened in the last two months, or maybe not quite the things that I wanted to have happen, because one of the reasons why, why this delay has been happening for so long is I was actually going to be doing some minor refits in the room here to give myself a little more storage capacity, but uh, that kind of fell through uh, a couple of weeks ago. Like, the markings are on the wall, and I'm ready to go, but things got a little chaotic about a month ago, and um, speaking of a month ago, um, in the last week of, of June, oh my god, oh my god, three weeks ago, three and a half weeks ago at this point, uh, in the last week of June, there was a terrible, terrible heat wave that came through the area, like record-shattering heat, well, not shattering, but rec definitely record-breaking heat wave. Three days at 100 plus. Now, where I live, now, in other parts of the country, you know, 100 plus is probably normal for, for a lot of other places, but here in the Pacific Northwest, especially west of the Cascade Mountains, that's actually a bad thing. That's actually not a good thing. And that's the reason why the vast majority of Pacific Northwesterners don't have AC. is because it doesn't get that hot. Like, once every two years, we might hit 100, and then that'd be the end of it. You see, we joke here that summer doesn't show up until after July 4th. And here it is today is July 15th, you know. But it was the last week of June, and it was 100 plus for three days. And with no AC, what can you do? You've got the fans running full blast, and the windows are closed. Actually, the windows are closed. That's what we had to do. And then we turned on the furnace fan. Not the heat, but just the fan to draw, draw cool air from under the house. And it was miserable. I, I've, I've been in California heat one time, and I've been in Midwest heat a couple of times. And I've been in the Florida heat one time and I was not a fan of any of those occasions and so and, and this is why I live in Washington State because I don't have to worry about the extremes of heat I don't have to worry about heavy snow and I don't have to worry about strong heat is strong summer heat I don't have to worry about those things and that's why the house doesn't have ACs because we never get that hot I know I'm prattling on about the temperature but like what the reason I'm bringing it up is because like I actually thought about doing an unboxing just to take my mind off the heat, but I was like, you know, decals and paint and whatever is going to start rubbing off, and I just don't even want to mess with it, so. And also, I was getting really lazy. Lazier than, than actually, lazier than I usually am, and it was just, it was miserable for three days, and then it, and then it finally dropped, it, it dropped down to 90 in the daytime, and then it dropped to 80, and then it dropped to 60, and it's been kind of sitting in the 60 to 70 range for the last two weeks now. It's like, oh, thank you. Like two days ago, it was pretty warm, but nowhere near that. So, and that was just the beginning of summer. I'm just, I'm just having the same. And then, um, I think it was two weeks ago, after the heat wave, um, the slight upgrade that I was going to be, was going to be doing to the room was put off because, um, well, now we have a renter in the other room over there. So that's off limits to me now. So, but, but whatever. But the reason I bring that up is because I'd actually cleared a number of my shelves of all the transforming toys and stuff like that, and they were actually sitting in boxes over there. Of course, when the renter came, um, I had to take all that and move it back in, which means that the project that I was working on has been put on delay. So... <sighs> So when I said in the on the community page like it's yeah it's going to be a little chaotic whatever it is, yeah that's it's it's chaotic over here and I actually have less room right now than I did because now I've got extra boxes with all kinds of stuff sitting around and it's completely disorganized. I'm actually losing track of some paperwork. So, uh. so anyways, yeah that's why I haven't done video anything in the la in the last two months now, a little over two months now. It's just. Uh. 
So with that fairly lengthy introduction out of the way, um, in early, was it April or May? Yeah, I think it was by the time of early April, May 2021, I was fully vaccinated against uh, the pandemic, and I am still fully vaccinated. You know, you get your obligatory two weeks adjustment period afterwards to let the thing get through your system and make certain you're not allergic to anything or whatever it is. Um, and for 2020 and part of, in the first quarter of 2021, the only places I was going was the grocery stores and my sister's house which, to be fair, was a little more than most people got, you know, whatever. Um, but, you know, like everybody else, I was starting to get a little cabin fever or whatever it is. And so when I finally got vaccinated and like, okay, all right, I could start relaxing, one of the first places I went to was Boba Khan, which is one of my favorite uh, buy sell. Actually, it's the only buy sell trade store within driving distance for me. Um, and I was so happy to see that they survived the pandemic. I was so happy because I I'd completely lost touch of them. Or I, I, you know, I hadn't been able to go there because it's actually out of the way of the grocery stores in my sister's place. I have to go out of my way in order to go to Boba Khan, which is why I don't go there very often. But anyways, um, I was so grateful to see that they survived. Like, yes! All right. Anyways, I went to Boba Khan uh, in early, early June. Yeah, early June. And I've said it before many times, if, I, uh, if money was not an issue, I would walk out of that store with half the items they've got easily. Well, almost half. I, I don't care about the, the, the girly stuff. Like, I don't care. Whatever. But anyways, um, I do always try to purchase something from them. Just to, you know, hey, I'm, I'm here and I still exist. And you guys are here and you still exist. And, and I, want, I want you guys to stay around. I like having you guys around. Um, but obviously because of the chaos that I just mentioned, I was not able to do the unboxing like I'd wanted to. Um, and then, let's see, was it last week? Or a week before. Yeah, it was last week. Uh, I paid a second visit to Bobacon because because I can, whatever. Oh, that reminds me. Um, when I was at Bobacon, one of the clerks was circling around with uh, with a cell phone camera. What else is a camera but a cell phone? What else is a cell phone but a camera? And uh, they asked if they could take my picture so they could be put up on their Facebook page. And I said, yeah, sure, why not? And they said, what's your name? And I said, Ava. And absolutely, I did not tell them my real name, because it's like, if I told them their real name, and then the photo goes up on Facebook, you all know my real name. <clears throat> so anyways, um, uh, they said, oh, the picture will be up by the end of the day, and uh, there's the picture. So, uh, you know, I deliberately wore my Union Fleet t-shirt at the time, because it was like, you know, who the hell's going to notice it if I wear it around home? You know, no, nobody's going to know. So, like, I'll wear it when I'm outside. Why not? Um, so, like, I'm trying to show off the shirt, and then I'm also trying to show that I'm very deliberately looking at uh, something Transformery on the shelf. And uh, my pose looks like crap. Like, I'm just sitting there, I'm like, take the damn photo already. Come on, dude, take the photo, for fuck's sake. Are you done yet? Are you done yet? Are you done yet? So, yeah, the photo's not very... Like, I should be a little more, ah, oh, that's what I should have done. But I wanted to show off my shirt, so what I should have done was, ah, oh, or should have done this, ah, oh, that's what I should have done. So, anyways, this is not the best photo I could have taken of myself, but there it is, so, whatever. So there it is, there's your proof, I actually do get out of the house once in a while. I have photographic proof that I do get out of the house once in a while. Shut up. So anyways, not the second time that I went to BubbaCon this year, but actually the first time, which was in early June, uh, I picked up this neat little guy, which is Energon Towline, uh, sans his, uh, his very trans red uh, weapon that sits up here. So um, I can't remember if I ever looked at this guy when he originally came out in like 2004, 2005-ish, something like that. But... Um, I recently saw a YouTube video on Towline, and I'm like, okay, yeah, that's, that's kind of a neat little thing. Oh, it's an homage to G1 Ironhide and Ratchet? Sure, I can get behind that. Um, so uh, that's what this is. Now, he didn't come with his rifle, but he did come with the... the they're not spark crystals. Are they like Energon chips, or... I can't remember what they're called. Anyways, uh, y'all remember these things, right? Anyways, yeah, he comes, he comes with one of these. And, oh, look at that, he actually is an Autobot. Hmm. 
So I'm just going to leave that right there. I actually have a number of Energon figures. Well, no, not really. Um, if you remember the uh, the Bayformers one movie repaints, um, they had uh, they had a number of Energon figures. I don't know if Toline was one of those repaints, but I I had a number of those Energon repaints for the was it uh, sector was it section or sector seven whatever it is you know. So I, I have a number of those repaints, which I did review at the time for uh, CollectionDX.com. Uh, you guys go to my profile there, and you'll you'll see you'll see the uh, the reviews I did from there. So I've got a number of those. So like they're Energon repaints; they're not necessarily Energon in name. This guy is definitely Energon. Um, and then the only actual actual Energon figure that I got at the time was Dive Bomb, who was near the end of the line. Um, you know that thing that you're asked where, like, uh, what kind of Transformer would you be if you could choose to be anyone? Well, for me, it would be Dive Bomb. Not because he's a grunt and he's mass-produced, but because he's actually quite awesome. So, yeah, I would either be Dive Bomb, because I really like his legs. He's got those massive knee guards, and I like his shoes. Uh, he's pretty sweet, and I like his, I like his legs, and I like the way... I like the way... or I like his head, and I like the way his... His, his legs become his wings. The wings actually have fold out. Let's see. The wings actually have fold out fe energon feathers. Okay, that's not how we do it. There we go. So he's got transparent green. Although, sadly, the green has started fading over the years. Sad. Anyways, yeah. I would either be Energon Dive Bomb, or I would be Hunt for the Decepticons Hailstorm. Because, you know. I'm a big, I'm a big guy, and I love all the over-the-shoulder cannons, and I love missile spam, uh, but I'm an absolute coward, <laughs> and so is Hail, Hailstorm. So I would either be Dive Bomb or I would be Hailstorm. So if I ever had to be a Transformer, it would be one of those two. That's that's the answer to the question. Anyways, um. What's your name? Towline. A little difficult to get him off of his sled. There we go. Have to gotta work it a little bit because we have those the energy and connection connector points right there. So we gotta gotta deal with that. And here's a little th a quick thing. There's a lot of kids who actually I didn't know about it until because uh, I did. It didn't come in a box. It didn't come in instructions, and it didn't come with his rifle. Um, but this was folded down, and a lot of kids may not have remembered or realized that this is actually a door that folds up and covers the back of the truck, uh, yeah, right, truck, covers the back of the van. And the weird thing most people don't realize is because you absolutely can connect this and not have the door open, then he has kind of a derpy 8-bit smiley face right there, you know, so, or derpy 8-bit smiley face, something like that. So yeah, anyways, don't, don't forget that you've got that door on the back there that you can, you can lift that up, okay? Now, I've heard this could be used as either a weapons platform, which I don't have any weapons to attach to it, whatever, or it can be used as kind of a repair bay. I'm not entirely certain about the latter one. Uh, let's see, get out of there. So anyways, yeah. So he's got a pair of legs, fold out here, twist those up, and then oddly, these are separatable, separable, and they're on ball joints. So you can't see what I'm doing. They're on ball joints. So that's kind of weird. I don't know why they did it that way, but they did, so, okay. And then the front wheels become the back, and then you get a nice little weapons chart right there. Your little weapons platform, and then you set the thing on top, and there's three. There's one, there's two, there's three. Uh, weapon ports you can put right there. And, if you, uh, which, which actually makes me kind of happy, um, if you're not paying attention, then you totally won't notice the three Gatling guns or machine gun barrels on either side. And no, those are not uh, exhaust nozzles. Those are actually machine guns. So that's pretty awesome right there. So he actually has quite a few weapons built in, in just into this platform thing. And then transformation for this guy is fairly start, straightforward. Uh, I will point out that when I got this, the ankle and knee joints were really really tight and you know it's that creaking sound of screws that are they're tied up too tightly and the plastic is starting to protest and considering this is 2021 and this is made in 2005 2000 yeah 2005 ish 
Um, I went in and I loosened the screws on his on his knees and uh, and ankles, and uh, that was uh, that was acceptable. That was enough. So yeah, I don't, it doesn't make the squeaking sound anymore. I also uh, adjusted the uh, the joint right here that I'm bending. I I loosened both of those screws. So that's not a problem either. One thing that is a problem, fortunately not on my second hand one here, is that the Autobot logo that's right here on the front of his on the front of his torso is in a really inconvenient place. Like you want to grab there in order to you see you want to grab there in order to pull the thing apart. And you also want to grab there to push it back together again. So the Autobot logo is in a good place except that it's in a place where it gets rubbed off real easily. So a lot of Energon tow lines they have their uh, they have their Autobot logo has been rubbed off over time. So I'm not saying it's the manufacturer's fault, but just like, you know, poor engineering, I suppose in that regard. And so here is Energon tow line. And uh, I actually like I actually like that he has the little shoulder pads up there. That's, that's nice. It's a little something for him. No backpack to speak of, although he obviously does have a little bit of light piping window in there. And uh, as far as posability, he's got ball joint in each ankle and technically has a ball joint in the head, but he cannot look up and down and he cannot tilt his head like this, but he can turn it side to side slightly. Slight to slight. Yeah, you can turn his head side to side, and that's kind of it. So, whatever. Um, he has he has ball joints in right here. You know where the where the transformation joint is. So technically, he, can, he technically he can move his shoulders back, which is always a good thing to have. You know, it's like okay, it gets you more dynamic poses, whatever. Uh, so he can he has ball joints in his shoulders, and then he has ball joints in his elbows. But you probably noticed by now. Here's the forearm, and here's the bicep, and you can see how tiny that area is, and then there's his elbow right there. So yeah, there's not a lot to offer. <laughs> the arm is a little disproportionate, but that's that's something you just have to deal with because of the, the way he transforms and the way, he, the way he's positioned. So, um, And then friction joints in his uh, ankles and hips. And that's it. No waist swivel, which, okay, that's understandable. It's weird, though. He has ball, He does have ball joints in his, in, his, uh, in his hips, but you can't tilt his feet out or in. It won't let you do that. I'm not entirely certain why they went that way, probably because it's like it was simpler to put a ball joint in there, but you cannot tilt his feet, nor his legs. Um, you, know, you can't tilt them forward and then out to the side. It, it won't let you do that. You can't turn the foot inside or out. So it's a little, it's a little odd, but it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. It's a nice, basic figure, whatever. And then you can take him with his totally invisible gun, which is like half the size of him. You can plug him into the platform here, except not. And I'm being told that this guy, actually I think I already said, this guy is supposed to be an homage to uh, G1 uh, Ratchet and uh, Ironhide. The only difference is he has a head, and he has different coloring, so whatever. And then oddly he has uh, G1 Skid's um, the red racing stripe. He's got, he's got G1 Skid's colors, so whatever. So, yep, there's, uh, there's Energon, um, I want to say Ironhide. Nope, Energon Ironhide is an entirely different critter, critter and keep that thing away from me. Actually, I wasn't hugely offended him by, by him. He's kind of a chunky transformer, that's why I didn't get it. I mean, really, Energon Ironhide is more of a, is more of an oversized minicon, if you think about it, the way he transforms and the way, he, yeah, he's just an oversized minicon. Um, a really, really oversized and overpowered Minicon. So, anyways, here's Energon Tow Line. Now, of course, being part of the Energon Line means that he can, in fact, combine with other figures. Well, most of them. He can't combine with the. I think these were called Basics back in the day. Basic, Basic Class or Legends Class or nowadays we'd call them Legend Class. But yeah, he's not combining with this. Actually, now that I think about this, might be a Deluxe. But 
I just so happen to have the only other actual, actual Energon figure. And he's not actually from Energon. He's actually from, uh, what did they call it? Was it Superlink? No. No, because cause Superlink was our mod. Uh, what was the Energon John one called? I don't remember. But anyways, this is Prowl. This is the Japanese version. And you can tell because he has, uh, he's got kanji right there. And on the other side as well. So, yes. And I actually got this guy at a completely different toy store, uh, Kicks Hobby Japan, may they rest in peace, which uh, was located just out, was located just outside of um, uh, Northgate Mall, which was like 15 minutes north of Seattle, something like that. Um, I picked this guy up there. Um, coincidentally, uh, Kicks Hobby Japan is where I got all of my Magi Ranger and Bokinger mecha from, or toy, yeah, most of them. Yeah, I think I got most of them from there, yeah. And they were gone, and then they were gone by the time, uh, no, I think they were around when Geki Ranger was around. Because I only knew knew about them for about three years or so, or whatever it is. Uh, yeah, anyways, Prowl here. Uh, it's a pretty nice figure, although he's, he's his legs are a little, a little complex to, to transform, so... Or they're, they're a little difficult to pose, I should say. Kind of the only big difference, I'll just a quick mini review right here. The only big difference between um, Energon Prowl and the, the Japanese equivalent is that the Japanese version has a transparent blue uh, rifle. The U.S. version is painted. It's still molded in the same, it's molded in the same transparent blue, but for whatever reason they painted it. So really, that's the only difference I can tell. The other difference is that again, he's got the he's got the the kanji or whatever it is on the other side of the. Oh, that looks real nice. He's got some kanji under there. So yeah. So anyways, um, Prowl was one of the. Let's see how do I want to do this? Yeah, Prowl was one of the uh, mainline characters from Energon. So he regularly appeared in the show. I don't remember. I think he was usually he was a. I never watched Energon, so maybe I should just shut up. I know he. Uh, all I know is that yeah, he did regularly appear in the show. Never went in for most of the Energon figures. Nowadays, I might change my mind, but at the time, like, uh, I either didn't have the money or because it was two thousand see two thousand five. Oh yeah, Magic Ranger. That's why. Uh, it was either. Uh, too expensive, or I didn't have the time or opportunity to get them, so I didn't get them. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I actually filmed this entire unboxing uh, four days ago, three days ago, something like that, but I just didn't like how it turned out, so technically I'm reshooting the whole thing, so I've had time to rehearse. Woo so there's Prowl and his... Uh, I think he's. I think I changed this correctly. It's, it's been a while, and I've never really. I've never had an energon, another energon figure to actually plug him into. So there's his head just hanging out underneath, which is what makes me think that yeah, he might actually have been a. Uh, um, uh, regularly was the shirt and head version. He was the, he was the torso of the combinations. He was not the pants. For toe line here, uh, it's kind of a weird one. You kind of half transform him back into. Um, uh, the band mode, but then point the feet and you carefully pull out with fingernails, unfortunately, a pair of uh, guns that are located under the front of his feet. Unfortunately, the friction's a little, little tight and they're a little difficult to get to. They're tabs for your fingernails, but no thank you. I honestly don't know if uh, Tow Line ever made it into the show. I don't know. So, I don't know if... Talon's kind of a weird one, because, like... He's a very, very small figure. Anyways, this is what you're supposed to do with his legs. And they don't peg into anything up here. It's just, you extend these, uh, these little gun barrels right there. You extend those, and you fold his legs up, and then that's it. Um, and then, you just plug one into the other. I'm not entirely certain how frequently this happens, but Toe Line is unusual in the Energon lineup in that he cannot form a pair of legs. He can't do it. All he can do is form a top half. And that's what makes me think, oh, maybe he wasn't actually in the show. He might have been like a toy exclusive figure, which, how would I know? So anyways, here's Toe Line with uh, 
really, really, really big pair of pants. And you, you can also see his arms. His arms are not proportionate to something here. Now, now of course, that's not saying anything about uh, um, you know how disproportionate other proper energon combiners were. I'm just saying, in this case, he just keeps his regular arms and his, his legs just kind of sit up there. So, mm, I don't know if he was ever teamed up with Prowl. I seriously doubt it, but uh, he is in this particular case. And Prowl to totally has his head sticking down here below his butt. So, yep, there's that. Of course, like any decent algebraic equation, what you do to one side, you absolutely have to do the other, which means this thing totally exists, which I don't know if this has a proper mode name, but um, he would probably look a lot better if I had that, that big red rifle of his. So, uh, yeah, this, this thing exists. Um, okay. Whatever. Actually, I like the idea of real skinny legs. He's almost cartoonish looking at him this way. And of course, he has over the shoulder cannons, so, you know, mustn't complain, of course. But uh, that being said, uh, kind of the rest of them is. The less said about that mode, the better. Yeah. Yeah, that looks about right. And ordinarily you would have his arms pointed downwards for, for legs mode, but you want to tilt him upwards to clear out for any kibble that might be coming along. Pearl's kind of a weird figure in that, like, his head is on a ball and socket joint, but he can't, he, and he can look up, and he can look forward, but what he can't do is look side to side. He can't do it. The ball joint is there for the transformation. You can stick his head really high up, and then, oh, yeah, sure, now he can look around. But when you put his head down into the proper position... He loses that ability. Well, he can kind of tilt his head to side to side like that. So, whatever. So, why am I bringing up his shirt mode? Because, well, you know, again, what you do to one, you have to be able to do the other. Because this is how Energon operated. Which means, yes, Prowl is also equally capable of going into full dirt mode as well. So, uh, I don't know how you feel about that, but... Yeah, he, he can also do this, so, yeah. That's a weird thing about, um, tow line. Strange name for a figure, by the way, who has no towing capability, and he doesn't have any line attached to him. Uh, that's the thing about tow line, is, like, because he's an homage, for the third time now, because he's an homage to G1 uh, Ironhide and Ratchet, he's one of the very few Transformers in the Energon line who... A splits into two parts in order in, as a requirement in order to form his robot mode, but he also has this kind of other half that isn't even used in his regular robot mode. You can't stick it anywhere when he's in robot mode. You just have to deal with it, you know. And then, not just that it's used; it's it's used as a battle platform, which is neat. But then it's like, well, you've got the robot mode. What are you going to do with this? And the other interesting part is, without this, there is no vehicle mode for for tow line. How weird is that? Yeah, that logo is definitely in a bad place on his chest. Not gonna argue that. I would like to have the rifle for tow line, but uh, chances are I'm probably not gonna get it. In fact, they had two of these things at BoaCon. This was the better of the two, or it was in the better condition of the two. So that's it. That is my two cents on Energon tow line. Not a bad figure. Not at all. It's a little difficult to, to separate or put back together, and, and again, this has a tendency to rub off really easily. But beyond that, it's not terrible. Not terrible at all. And so with that, this is Unit 4 a saying thank you very much for tuning in. Wait a minute, I totally picked up another figure when I was at the same time. That guy.